Yo, Snapchat, let's discuss the generational influence of mass media and the threat of an aging population on the progress of humanity. Let's go. Okay, so I'm probably going to be generalizing a lot in this, so if you're over 40, I apologize if I offend you. Just go and, have, go and grab a gin and tonic and check out your property portfolio. It'll make you feel better. I guess I'll quickly run through some of the content that is kind of like um, combined in my mind over the last two days that have resurfaced this, this idea. That's, that's how my brain works. Content, content, ooh, connect them, idea. Wow. I guess since I've been running for politics, I've been getting a lot of emails about different topics. Um, and the main one is like all these really old religious people who are like, um, you know, what's your stance on gay marriage? And then recently there was the whole Brexit thing, like the UK leaving the EU and voting, ah uh, yeah, voting to leave. And they actually did a breakdown of the demographics and most of the old people voted to leave, most of the young people voted to stay. And then last night I was binging some videos on space and like Planck Constant and stuff like that. Um, and then I switched over to Terence McKenna and watched a few of his talks. Um, and they were quite interesting. They're always interesting when I jump into his talks. Yeah. In one of his videos, he's talking about this tribe that apparently has the default kind of cultural thing that nothing in the universe makes sense. So he's like, you know, their, their contribution to epistemology was pretty lacking, but they're, they're jolly happy people. <laughs> and then at the end, he was like, well, you've got to remember, like, for God's sake, you're a monkey and you're asking to understand the fundamental nature of reality. Imagine if a, a squirrel ran around with those goals. <laughs> Why don't you just go bury some nuts and like run around and make noise? <laughs> but I watched another interview with him from 1996, so 20 years ago, talking about the rise of the internet. It had just been out for like five years, and he was talking about how that will completely change culture away from mass media towards individual consumption. So we all know our parents and our grandparents don't have very warped views on a lot of different topics. Um, and I think the reason for that is purely because of mass media. It's purely that influence. I kind of subscribe to the theory that you are just merely a collection of the inputs and outputs. Um, there is no, no really like... You, know, um, you don't shape your own identity, others do. Meaning your thoughts, your opinions, your behaviours and your views uh, are all pretty much shaped and influenced heavily by the media you consume, the content you consume, the people you hang around with, your friends, workmates. Before the internet, mass media was everything and mass media is like one message broadcasting out to millions of people, you know, it's one to many. Um, and that has a massive influence on how people think, particularly the older generation. So our parents and our grandparents were raised on a single source of, of media information which is a great way to control a population and have everyone you know, create public consensus, but it creates warped views. Like hell, even today, I'm, I'm pretty certain a lot of, like, I'm pretty sure my parents, and I know a lot of other people's parents, their daily source of information is current affair, Today Tonight, The Daily Telegraph, and The Nightly News. Scary. Now I have this other theory that the primary driver of all cultural revolutions, all political change and everything is technology. It's technology happens and then everything follows. The uh, countercultural rise in the 60s of the, the hippie movement and stuff, that was powered by LSD as their technology medium. That kind of like counterculture thinking and anti-establishment movement uh, helped, helped bring about the rise of the internet um, and informed a lot of the superpowers and the people who ran those startups and created those startups. And then from a macro perspective, what the internet then enabled is it broke up that one-to-many um, relationship between information and people and changed it to many-to-many, any-to-any. And smartphones just democratize that entire movement even more, down to the individual level, where it's now cheap for anyone to access the internet and to find their communities online and to find their voice and to find out new ideas and information. But this now becomes a problem for politics, for traditional politics and the nation state, because now you don't have a public consensus anymore. You don't, you're not feeding everyone the same type of information. Everyone has their own thoughts and views and opinions. But one of the big problems I see that's only going to get worse is the aging population. We all know, we, you've probably seen those, you know, um, bell, bell curve charts of the population getting older and older. The issue is the next 20, 30 years are probably going to be the most important years of human history. That will, that will completely shape it, like everything to come. They're the most important the next 20, 30 years. Purely because all the exponential technology we've been experiencing is going to start hitting that, that vertical peak where things change very rapidly, like, you know, down the rabbit hole, rapid, crazy stuff's going to happen. <laughs> um, and so perhaps this is where democracy might become a threat to the progress of humanity because the conservative, aging, older population will outnumber the younger population, so their vote will count more. Um, and there's also the problem that our society is kind of back to front. All the older generations control all the power and capital and wealth, and they're conservative, so they make conservative investments. It's well known that your most energetic and your best, most creative ideas are usually in your 20s or like early 30s. Um, you look at, say, like Einstein and Newton, they made their best discoveries in their 20s. And people in their 20s tend to have more optimism, more energy for the future. And yet the problem is that they have no capital, so they're forced to climb the, the corporate ladder for like 10, 20 years until they have any resources. Um, so I don't have a solution for any of this, I'm just venting. <laughs> if you have a solution, let me know. I just think it's going to be very important for our future to somehow do some type of wealth and power redistribution away from the older generations back towards the younger generations. But again, something like that will only ever happen through some type of technological means. It's 
Like, there's no way the government's gonna successfully pass a law saying, hey, all old people, you have to give all your shit to the young people now. I don't know. Like, another example, I know in Australia, one of the big funding sources for startups that um, a bunch of groups are trying to pursue and trying to open is the superannuation funds. There's just hundreds of billions, trillions of dollars sitting there unused. Imagine how awesome it would be if we had a culture where everyone over the age of 40 just felt some compelling want to redistribute all their resources back to younger people to give them a chance. And older people still have a lot to bring to the table, like as advisors, um, just not making the core decisions, being more the kind of the, the leaders, the, the wisdom the, to give advice. And you'd also give them equity, but I think what you want to do is give them equity in the pool of everyone's activities, every young person's activities, rather than picking and choosing their own individual investments. Because if you think of like angel investors and venture, and venture capitalists, they tend to be older people because they've accumulated a bunch of wealth and now they want to um, invest it back into companies and they tend to be like young startup founders. But because they're picking and choosing who they want to invest in, oftentimes I find they make very conservative investments. They want ROI. They don't invest in crazy out there ideas that might actually change the world. So the politics and voting issue, I think we can uh, solve by decentralizing the system, making laws less about consensus and more fluid so that everyone can live under their own system, but they all work together in one unified sense. Yeah, reallocation of Capital One, I'm not quite sure. Maybe like some type of big hedge fund or big like investment fund where you just put money in and it goes to the young people and you get a certain return back. So snapping your own thoughts and ideas, how would you solve this issue? Because it's only going to get worse as the population gets older at Futura. This one, right here. Oh, beautiful. That one.